Hello, hello. Here we are for Unit 4, Skill 4. This is Miss Wesley again. And today we're going to focus all around parallelogram proofs. So our essential question for today is how can parallelogram properties be used in a statement and reason proof? So at this point, if you watched the last video with me, um, we focus on how to write a traditional T-chart statement and reason proof using our basic vocabulary. But now we're going to build upon that and say, okay, what if we know something's a parallelogram? How could that help us in a statement and reason proof? So before we jump into a proof, we're going to start by talking about some characteristics here that are important that you know and why they would then be helpful in a proof. So for instance, we know that opposite sides in a parallelogram are congruent. So that means we could say, for instance, AD would be congruent to BC. A little tight for space here. And likewise, we would have this side, AB, congruent to CD. So meaning that if something told you, a proof told you that it's a parallelogram, you can always jump to right saying that those pieces are automatically congruent, which could be really helpful. We also know that opposite sides are parallel. So like the same things that I did up here, I'm just going to swap out and put the parallel symbol in between them. So we know that AD is parallel to BC and AB would be parallel to CD. And remember, you can show parallel with the little arrows, one set of arrows for one pair of corresponding sides, another set of arrows for the other corresponding sides. We also know that opposite angles are congruent. So if I look at my opposite angles, that would mean angle A would have to be congruent to angle C. And likewise, angle B would have to be congruent to angle D because they are opposites. Okay, we have also talked about before in the past how, I'm trying to get a darker color here for us, adjacent angles. So remember, that means angles that are next to each other. Like my room is adjacent to the mat room, my classroom's adjacent to Mr. Andreas's science room. So adjacent angles are actually supplementary. So meaning if angle A is 60, that would have to force angle B to be 120 because remember, supplementary means they add to 180. And if A is 60, C is automatically going to be 60 because they're opposites. And likewise, if B was 120, D is also going to be 120. All right, and this last one here, this one comes in helpful or comes in help quite a bit so I'd put a star by this one. Diagonals in a parallelogram bisect each other and we know that bisect means a split in half so what that would mean is if I use this picture to the right here AE would be congruent to CE and likewise BE is going to be congruent to DE so that's what I'm going to put down here that AE is congruent to, what would it be, CE, and BE is congruent to DE. Sorry my congruent symbols aren't looking very congruent today. All right, so all of these, mainly this one here and this one here and that one down at the bottom that I picked out, those are probably your top three that are most likely to be used. You can always still use the parallel one. Um, Adjacent angles isn't going to help you too much in actually solving a t-chart proof, but it's just another good fact to remember. So if we take a look at this example that we have down here, it says ABCD is a parallelogram. That's all it tells us in the given. And it says our goal is to prove that triangle ABC, so the triangle on the right, is congruent to the triangle on the left, CDA. So if this showed up on a test, you'd have to know the properties of a parallelogram in order to prove what it wants you to prove because it's not telling you like oh this bisects this or this is parallel to this all it says is it's a parallelogram so using the information we talked about up above we're gonna have to pull information and say okay based on the fact it's a parallelogram I know that I can say this 
So I already put our statement and reason there for us to save us a little bit of time. So if I know it's a parallelogram and we go back to simply the first line that we set up above here, opposite sides are congruent. That would mean to me that AD must be congruent to CB and likewise AB is going to be congruent to CD. And again, that's because it's a parallelogram. So I'm going to make that be my second statement here. I'm going to say that AB is congruent to, that would be AB is going to CD. And likewise, we know that AD is going to be congruent to CB. Now, when you talk about reasons and you're talking about a parallelogram or any specific shape, you have to make sure you state that shape in your reason. So we're simply going to copy this. Opposite sides are congruent. And then we're going to say in a parallelogram. So opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. All right, so right away, that gets me two pairs of sides. So we're in pretty good shape. We already have two out of the three things that we need. And I'm gonna tell you at this point, there's a couple different options that you could use from here. If you wanna stick with the fact that we are talking about a parallelogram, we could go ahead and use opposite angles are congruent. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one and then I'll talk about the other way that you could solve this um, problem. So opposite angles here, yes, angle A would be congruent to angle C, but that's really not gonna help me at all. But if I said angle B is congruent to angle D, and I'm allowed to say B and D because there's no other lines going to or from B and D, we know that's gonna be true because of our parallelogram properties. So angle B is congruent to angle D. If you put a one and a two there and wanna use that, that's fine. And again, like we did for statement two, I'm going to copy this first part and say opposite angles are congruent, followed by in a parallelogram. So opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. Oh, my stylus here is... There we go. All right, so looking at that now, that means I have an angle in between the sides that I already said were congruent. So I have three pieces of information, and if we just double check here that it meets our one of our five criteria, starting at one and taking the shortest path, side, angle, side, likewise, side, angle, side, that's enough information. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, we can now officially prove their triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA and my reason based on our method here was side angle side. Now like I said there was another way we could have solved this um, proof. So after I said opposite sides are congruent and if I forgot that opposite angles are congruent notice that these two triangles also share a side. So you could have said AC is congruent to AC because of reflexive and then your last statement would have been side side side. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I just focus this proof on the parallelogram properties since that's what we're looking at here in this skill. But if you were to do that on a test there's nothing wrong with that. You wouldn't lose any credit um, because that is another correct way to solve this problem. All right, let's take a look at the back. Um, I think we have one or two more examples to go there. Okay, and to my surprise, but probably to your enjoyment, there's just one example left to go. And this is a very common one that's come up um, in the past on some past Regents exams. And again, there's a very simple way to solve this. There's some more difficult ways to solve this, um, but I'll take you through here what would be the most concise um, option here to go ahead and solve this proof. So it says given OATG is a parallelogram with OT intersecting GA and E, prove that OAE is congruent to TGE. So again, since there's multiple triangles I'm looking at here, I'm just going to take a second and outline the triangles that I'm looking to get congruent so I don't confuse myself. So O, A, and E followed by T, E, and G. All right. 
So our goal here is to get those two yellow triangles congruent. And again, like I said, there's multiple ways to go about this, but all we know right now is that we have a parallelogram. That's it. Yes, it tells us we have diagonals that are intersecting at E, but just because they intersect doesn't give us anything. So all we know is it's a parallelogram. I copied our first statement down for us to save us a little bit of time here. So in looking at that picture there, and if I start with the fact that it's a parallelogram, I could start by saying, like we did in the last one, well, opposite sides are congruent, so OA would be congruent to TG. But if I think back on the fact that they drew the diagonals in here, and you think about that last um, statement that we wrote that I had you guys star that talked about the diagonals, diagonals in a parallelogram bisect each other. Remember, bisect means to split in half. So because of that, OE would have to be congruent to TE, and likewise, AE is going to be congruent to GE. So right there, just knowing that one fact, the diagonals bisect each other, you can get two pieces of information out of that. So that's what I'm going to use as our second statement here. I'm going to say that OE is congruent to TE. Come on, what happened? TE. And again, for the same reason, I can say AE is congruent to GE. So, like we did on the first page, I cannot just say diagonals bisect each other. Yes, that's true, but you have to say how you know that or why you know that, and again, it's because it's a parallelogram. So I'm going to write diagonals, my pen will work, diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. Okay? So, oh, that's really messy over here on the left. I apologize. So, right away, if we're taking a look at this, we already have side and a side, followed by a side and a side. So we're off to a really good start. We just need one more piece of information. And again, when you see triangles like this that they're not overlap in terms of their sharing a side completely, but they do share a vertex here. Remember the angles that are formed in this scenario, all right? These are vertical angles, but you cannot say angle E is congruent to angle E. That's wrong because there's more than one option for E. I wouldn't know what part of E you're talking about, but as soon as I put a number in and I say, okay, that's angle one and that's angle two, now we're good to go. So my third statement can be angle one is congruent to angle 2, and again, I know that because vertical angles are congruent. Alright, so at this point, if I go back and add in that A that I have for that vertical angle and the A that I have for this vertical angle, in my shortest distance, if I start at 1 and work my way to the other two pieces, I see side, angle, side, side, angle, side, and we know that's enough and that's an appropriate method to prove triangles are congruent. So we're ready to state our final step here. So triangle OAE is congruent to triangle TGE. And based on the information that we use in this specific proof, again, if you were to do this proof a different way, you'd probably end up with a different last line, and that's fine. But based on how we did it, we're going to say side, angle, side. Now, the Regents also likes to take these proofs and follow it up with another step or another question after that. So it says, name the rigid motion that maps OAE onto TGE. So it's saying, what would we have to do to take our triangle on the top here and turn it into our triangle on the bottom? So the most common thing that students like to say, and this is what I would agree with here, is there's a rotation that would need to happen, but because we're not on the grid, we have to specify what's that rotation um, being turned around. And in this scenario, it would be being rotated around E. And then we'd have to say, okay, well, how many degrees is it being rotated? And since we want this triangle to turn upside down, we would say that it's being rotated 180 degrees. So the shortest and the most concise way that you could write this out would be a capital R for rotation, 
you're telling me what is it being rotated around, which is point E, comma, how many degrees is it being rotated? 180. And that would get you full credit um, on an exam like that. The other thing um, that students like to say, and this is an option, is this triangle would be reflected, but it would be reflected over point E. So it's not being reflected across a line through the middle because notice O can't match with G, but O would go to T, A would go to G, and then E would stay where it is. So the other option that you have, but again, I would suggest using what we started with here, is you could say it's a reflection, so a lowercase r over e. That's your other option. All right, and this is just for ourselves here to wrap this up um, in terms of what other options could you have used for this proof. So what other triangle congruence theorems could be used to prove these triangles were congruent? So we took the method of side angle side. You could also take the method of side side side, and that would be done by using what we did first. The diagonals bisect each other, and then you could have said opposite sides are congruent. So that would have worked. There's no way you could do HL because we're not going to get right angles anywhere. You could have done angle side angle. This would have been a much longer proof to do. You would have had a state that the lines are parallel. Then you would have had a state that angle this angle up here is alternate interior to this angle down here. Likewise with these two. And then you would have had angle side angle going across. Um, that would be fine. It would just be a much longer proof and a much more complicated one. And if you tried that, please have your teacher check it over to make sure you weren't missing any steps. And you could have also done similarly angle angle side um, using vertical angles, maybe a pair of alternate interior and then the angles at the top. But like I said, the one you could not have done would have been HL. So the most straightforward would be the one that we did, side angle side. That's the one that I would recommend. Um, but the other three are possible options because a parallelogram gives you so much information to work with that it would all depend on what you remember and what um, works best for you. So we're almost done with this unit, but again, like I suggested in the last one, you need to try these practice problems before you take the CFU. Proofs can be a little bit of a struggle at first, so don't be afraid to call your teacher over, and we will be glad to help you. See you next time.